Hey guys, it's Max. Today I will be answering that question. Is it worth spending $450 to upgrade to Vega 48 graphics? Now, if you've been following along, you know that Apple refreshed their iMacs. We have an i9 processor available, eight cores, 16 threads, five gigahertz, and this thing performed really well, it even beat out the iMac Pro in a lot of tasks. But when I ran the benchmarks for my comparisons, I saw that the benchmarks are not that much higher than the already included 580X. And just like me, a lot of you guys you guys were seeing that, were wondering about that, you guys were commenting, you guys were sending me messages, even got some phone calls asking, should I upgrade? Some of you are already stretching your budgets, you know, fairly thin to get this new iMac, and that is what I set out to find out. If you guys appreciate all the testing and time and money that goes into it, please hit the like button. If you guys are gonna buy one of these, use the affiliate links down below. This truly does take a lot of effort and a lot of money, and this is the only way I can continue to do so. So starting out, the one thing I wanna say is, if you're choosing between going with an i9, that the eight core 16 thread, or Vega 48, definitely choose the i9 instead. Now along with that, I'll give you a sneak preview and say that in some cases there's almost no differences. In other cases, that's actually twice as fast with the Vega 48 graphics, and I really could not believe that myself. And in the timeline, the smoothness, it can really affect that as well. Before I show you the results from Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, and Premiere Pro, I'm gonna show you some benchmarks here, starting out with the metal and open CL tests, as you can tell, there's only about a 17 to 18% difference. But if we take a look at Unigine Heaven, which is a gaming benchmark here, I see a 45% difference between the two, which is very interesting to have such a big swing. It almost seems like Geekbench 4 isn't properly testing these or isn't properly showing you the difference. Now on the CPU end, both of these have the i9 and everything else is exactly the same. And it doesn't look like it seems to make a difference regarding which graphics card you pair the i9 with. And while we're on the topic of the CPU, I have to clear something up that Linus Tech Tip said. Core i9 9900K F. And that F means that it omits the Intel HD graphics. No onboard GPU means that Intel's quick sync video encoding is out of the question here. I'm not sure how he got that information, and when I saw his video, I was really worried because I talked about QuickSync in my i9 iMac video, that it's a benefit over the iMac Pro, and I looked at all my results, everything seemed to line up, so I had to do a bunch of digging, a bunch of testing, downloading a bunch of programs, and from what I found, even if the HD graphics are disabled, QuickSync is still working perfectly. In this program, it actually scanned my system, showed that it was using the Intel graphics to do uh, acceleration for video encoding, and then when I'm rendering video, looking at the activity monitor in my iStat menu, the Intel graphics does show up. So if you watch Linus's video, um, I think maybe the iMac has graphics disabled, but QuickSync is still perfectly working, and looking at our results, it makes complete sense, and it shows that it's working. Getting into the video editing and starting off with stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip, both Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve get about a 20% improvement with Vega 48 graphics. Um, Final Cut relies on the CPU and graphics, whereas DaVinci Resolve relies solely on the graphics. So we see about a 20% improvement, sort of uh, showing us similar to what Geekbench 4 showed us. In Premiere Pro, there is literally no difference whatsoever. That's because it mainly relies on one core of the CPU. Jumping into a five minute 4K project with two LUTs and film grain applied, both in Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve, we were slightly faster, but really it's not that much of a difference. But in Premiere Pro, the iMac with Vega 48 graphics was about 50% faster. And not only that, in the timeline, we had no issues, super smooth. You can have full res with those effects enabled. So that is a good improvement. Now before I jump into editing 8-bit H.265 footage, 10-bit footage, before we look at different raw codecs, I wanna give a big shout out to our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 25,000 classes in videography, photography, business, and more. It's available on both Android and iPhone with the ability to download any course for offline viewing. So stop wasting your time playing Candy Crush and expand your skills with Skillshare. I'm currently checking out color grading for filmmaking, the vision, art, and science. They also have a ton of filmmaking, drone, and video editing classes. Skillshare is hooking it up and giving away a free two-month unlimited access trial to the first 500 people who click the link in the description box. And after that, it's only about 10 bucks a month. 
I highly recommend joining their 7 million members, get access to 25,000 classes, and stepping up your game in 2019. Jumping into a 5 minute 4K project, this time with 8-bit HEVC footage with effects once again, in DaVinci Resolve we see a similar 20% improvement, in Final Cut only an 8% improvement, but in Premiere Pro almost twice as fast. So far, it really seems like Premiere Pro is really liking the Vega graphics. We did see a similar thing uh, with the MacBook Pros, the Vega 20 compared to the 560X. Premiere loves that new architecture. Now let's take a look at 10-bit HEVC footage, and this is where things get interesting. So as far as the actual times, uh, they don't seem that different in Premiere Pro and in Final Cut, about the same time when we're rendering. And keep in mind, this is 10-bit. But in DaVinci Resolve, the iMac with the 580X graphics takes almost twice as long. Now along with that, I saw a massive difference in timeline playback. In Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve, with the Vega 48, everything is super smooth. We're not having any hiccups. Everything plays back perfectly. With the 580X graphics, I saw a ton of stuttering and the playback, especially 60 FPS footage with the 10-bit was horrendous, just like my old 2016 system. So if you're gonna be editing 10-bit H.265 footage, you absolutely need to buy the Vega 48 graphics. All right, let's jump into Canon Cinema Raw Light from the C200, and here with my standard five-minute project with a lot in color corrections, in Final Cut, the Vega 48 was about 20% faster, in DaVinci Resolve, 35% faster, and in Premiere Pro, about twice as fast. So those are some impressive numbers, but what is more impressive is the playback. So this is a 4K60 project, and in Final Cut, with the standard 580X graphics, I played back at about 45 frames per second, so it could not handle the full 60 FPS. But with Vega 48 graphics, it handles it at 60 frames per second, just like the $5,000 iMac Pro. In DaVinci Resolve, I don't even know what the playback was. It showed up at 60, but I don't believe it because it got crazy choppy just like this. Uh, and it definitely was not playable at the full resolution that I was editing with. Whereas with Vega 48, it is perfectly smooth. Now in Premiere Pro, uh, neither of these systems can play it back at full resolution, 4K 60 RAW, but the frame rates are better with the Vega 48. And as you saw for the exports, it's basically twice as fast. Now one more thing that I noticed when I was doing these tests is how much louder and how much more often the fan spun up with the 580X, that is the cheaper graphics card. It is an older architecture, I am guessing that it takes more power, it puts out more heat, so the fans were audible and they were louder when they were spinning up. Now finishing off with 4.5K red raw footage from the Raven in Final Cut, I did not see much of a difference at all. Our limitation is actually the CPU, not the graphics, so neither of these graphics cards are actually maxed out when I'm exporting this footage. That is why in DaVinci Resolve, about 55% faster with the Vega 48. Here the CPU is also pinned, but it's making better use of the graphics card, which is very interesting. Good job DaVinci Resolve. And in Premiere Pro, the Vega 48 graphics is about 20% faster. And here, both the CPU and the graphics were maxed out on both, and it actually resulted in a time that was faster in Premiere Pro uh, than in Final Cut, which is very interesting. Wow, Premiere Pro, good job too. And come on, Final Cut, use all the graphics if it's available for you. That's very weird. So to wrap all of this up, is it worth spending an extra $450 for Vega 48 graphics? Uh, well, I did the math and you're spending roughly 10 to 15% more money for this upgrade, uh, depending on the other components that you choose. Based on math, the only case where it doesn't make sense to upgrade is if you're editing 4K H.264 footage with Final Cut. There, it's pretty efficient already, it's really fast, really smooth, and it doesn't seem like it's worth it. But for almost everybody else, H.265, 8-bit or 10-bit, especially Canon C200, footage and Red Raw and for all the other programs, man, it makes a big difference. In some cases, twice as fast and oftentimes 20%, 30%, 50% faster for roughly 10 to 15% more money. And if you edit some of these codecs, it can really make or break your video editing experience. So I would highly recommend it if you can afford it. Thank you guys for watching. Definitely use the links if you're gonna buy an iMac that really helps support this channel. And if you're gonna upgrade your RAM, there's links for that as well, including how to install. Check out Soundstripe, I highly recommend them. If you're gonna license any sort of music, it is a fantastic deal. This is Max, and I'll see you in the next video.